Hi everyone. Hi Lauren. Hi guys. Welcome to this Soul Chat with Ray. This episode I have my friend Jasmine Montoya who is going to be coming on. And I'm so excited to bring her on. So let me see if she's here. Hi everyone. We'll wait a couple of seconds. Hopefully she comes on. Hey guys, nothing much. <laughs> I'm excited to be here and to do this live. So we'll just wait a couple of minutes here <laughs> and see. There she is. Hi, Jasmine. There we go. Hi, Jasmine. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm good. I was like waiting. I'm like, how does this work? Am I going to, is he calling in? Or I'm like, let me check. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm so happy to meet you face to face. And, um, it's it's great to finally see you. I know. I'm excited. You. <laughs> I have my tea. I'm yes. all ready for this. I'm, I've been like wanting to do this interview for such a long time. I'm, yeah, I'm so ready. Yes. I had to turn my volume up. I think my volume was a little bit low on my phone. Uh, oh, I don't know if yours here. is a little low. Is it low? I think it was. I, I don't know. Maybe it was just me. Okay. I can hear you better now. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Wonderful. So um, everyone, this is my guest today, uh, Jasmine Montoya from California, right? I'm in LA. Yes, I LA. am. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I'm going to have her introduce herself to y'all. So Jasmine, can you tell them a little bit about yourself, please? Sure. Hello, everybody that I'm seeing come on here. I'm Jasmine Montoya. I am originally from New York and now uh, an LA transplant. I'm a single mama of one, a beautiful baby boy. Aww. I am an intuitive, a Reiki master, a coach, all in one, compassing woman who is not afraid to speak her truth, never have been, and never will be. Yes, <laughs> you yeah. go girl. <laughs> exactly, not gonna shut me up ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I met uh, Jasmine, um, over Instagram, we met over about a year and a half ago, maybe close to two years now. And, um, you know, she came to me at a time that was, uh, you know, I won't go into details, but in her life, you know, every one of us, even if we're intuitive, we need help. Like I go to psychics as well. I go to clairvoyance all the time to get insight because it's hard to read yourself. I mean, we can pick up, you know, certain things and our spirit guides will communicate with us, but we always need that interaction. And I'm so happy that our our past cross Jasmine it's been a blessing to have you um, she also was promoting my book when it first came out uh, I was one of the first people like <laughs> I ordered that people. instantly <laughs> yeah and I've been giving it to friends too I'm like handing that out I love oh, it you're so sweet and I'm so grateful to you for that and just your spirit overall because I see you I know that a lot of people think that I don't follow them or because I don't like pictures um, that I'm so busy that I don't watch my followers or, or you know um my colleagues you're like a colleague of mine yeah. and um and a friend and i do i see all of your posts and everything that you're doing so guys if you haven't followed jasmine please go ahead and follow her today if you're interested in getting a, a reading or getting some healing this is the person to go to i always i would never bring anyone on my show that i don't 100 percent confide in or you know i feel like maybe it's not good representation so um you know i have full faith and believe in you jasmine and what you do and i know that you're the real deal um and so like i said i'm just so happy and that's one of the things you know i'm bringing like-minded guests onto my show mm -hmm. um to share the platform because to me there's no competition in this spirituality in this world um, and I see it time and time again, like every day, you know, I see people that are struggling, that are intuitives and, you know, they're, they may have been in this for quite some time, but there's just jealousy everywhere they go. And so 
with me, that's not the case. You know, I want to bring um, different guests like yourself that are very, you know, uh, masters at their craft and that are still, you know, on their journey and able to help others. So, I'm yeah, and I just want to jump in on that. With yeah, I because I was always like the same way. Like, oh, are, is there enough space for everybody in this like wellness? And I'm in LA, right? So I'm in that yeah. that area, <laughs> uh, which we can go there later. But I feel that we all have our community. We all have our tribe. Like you have your story. I have my story. I know I don't relate to this person. I relate to you. I relate to that person. It's there's so many beautiful people wanting to relay a message and help everyone. And it's like you, you get your tribe when you just start speaking your truth. That's when your tribe comes, you know, and there's so many people out there, just like there's so many people that need help. There's so many people who you who you can go to to help you. Right. And like, um, you know, one of the things that I see from time to time and I'm just taking on my shoes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have okay. my shoes on, are off. I want to be like... comfortable. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, what I, w I was noticing is that a lot of people in the spiritual community, they um, socially climb and they like to align themselves with someone that is already famous, you know, or that is well known. Um, and I'm not saying that's wrong. But you know, like for me, I don't consider myself famous. I know that I'm, you know, well known, but I'm not considered like a famous, famous person um, that's in the spiritual world. Like I'm talking about like people that are in the Hay House community, you know, or mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so I feel like, um, you know, I, what I've encountered is like when I have approached certain people to like do the show, you know, I will uh, message them and I get the response like crickets, you know, and I know that they saw my message, but you know, that's how I see like the difference. Like sometimes certain people, I guess, contractually, you know, they're not able to do it or they may just have reservations because they're not making money off of this. Like Jasmine, like the guests that I'm bringing onto the show, like Jasmine, she's not being paid to come on here. She is, is doing it because she willingly wants to. Um, so I'm not paying any of my guests to do that. And I feel like that's the, that's authenticity there. And it's, it, you know, it's helpful to, to bring on people, um, you know, they can, can elaborate and kind of give us a little bit of different perspective. So I've, uh, given enough rant <laughs> about that. Um, <laughs> I want to go ahead and ask you, um, at what age did you know your calling was to do spiritual work or healing work? Yeah. So not at a young age, it literally started, um, when I was pregnant with my son, he was the, the catalyst of so much of, of wanting to understand who I am and why I am this way. And, you know, like he was my deep dive. So, right. you know, in my twenties, I was a fashion producer for Matt Cosmetics. I was living in New York. I was in that, that world and, you know, traveling around the world and just kind of in that more of a surface level life, even though I genuinely thought that I was being me and I was going for what I wanted and, you know, money and beauty and traveling and a family and living in the city. Like that was, what I thought accomplishment was. Yes. You know, and I realized when my son was in my belly, like, as I was reflecting, not that that's a bad environment, but I was like, I want to just do more. I want to, I want to help people. I want to guide people. I want my son to look at me and be like, wow, like, I'm so proud of my mom, you know, yes. so I've been doing everything I could. And still I am. So this way he can be proud of you me. You are. You are. And I'm so proud of you. Like, I really authentically, and I mean this not just because we're friends and I know you, yeah. but I know that uh, how hard you've been busting your <laughs> patootie. To My get culo. You are. And it's not easy. And I see, uh, I see the drive in you. And that's why I'm so just elated that you're here today. Because um, like myself, like you, you know, uh, myself, I was in a corporate job um, being, a, you know, an administrative assistant to a site director and four or five site, uh, operation managers. Um, and that was like so hectic. It was so stressful. Um, and it, at that time, you know, I was like, this cannot be my final destination because I was already going close to eight and a half years working for this company before they decided to shut it down and let like 500 employees go but I was like this this can't possibly be what I was brought here to to do it you know here on earth and I you know it wasn't until I had my near-death experience at 31 which I've spoken about before in other podcasts is that it you know it kind of changed my whole uh dynamic and perspective but this work is so fulfilling like you said um because we get a we get to work with a variety of people from different platforms and we get to provide healing 
Um, cause you know, what I do, what you do intuitively, we, we're not any different. And I feel like that we're all like all brothers and sisters in the spiritual community and we all bring some kind of form of healing. Um, it's like a universal language. So guys, if you have questions, you can feel free to ask them, um, in the comments while you're listening to us, uh, chat and have tea. And then, um, we'll be addressing those as well today. Um, brings me to my next question uh, for you, Jasmine. And, um, I guess, have you seen others struggle with their spiritual abilities and what advice could you give to them? Oh, I see so many people struggling. And I think the struggle is not believing, like yeah. not having faith that what you're feeling, what you're seeing, what you're hearing is really the truth. Yeah, and I that was my that. thing too. Like that, I mean, I had all these abilities when I was younger but I was like, I can't trust myself. Like, I'm too emotional. I'm too this. I'm too that. Like, I'm going to go with the an analytical belief and use that instead of my intuition saying, like, God, this feels weird. I don't want to do it. But everybody's saying I should do it. I I'll do it. And I, yeah. I carried that along for so long. And it was like, you know, there are signs. There are so many things that the universe brings to you. But if you're not aware of it and if you don't trust yourself, then they're going to go to waste. And so I really see a lot of people saying, well, I heard this or like I had this dream about that, but I don't know because I really want to be with him. And this dream is saying that he's, you know, like not for yeah. me, <laughs> but like my e ego, my ego, you know, it's like, it's like trying to decipher, decipher ego from truth. And that was like a, a big thing for me too. Like a big shift of like, is this ego or is this coming from a place of, heart center. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's like a lot of us live in ego and we live in fear. And that's what, you know, fear of judgment, fear of being misunderstood. Uh, and that's what uh, people ask me all the time. And I'm in the process of doing some classes, training classes um, uh, to help people develop um, their spiritual abilities or medium and psychic abilities. Because I truly believe that we all have a certain level of intuition that we can mm -hmm. tap into. Um, and you know that, and I know that, but a lot of people that are listening today, I'm telling you, because I got it, you know, also like I've had some people that fear because I'm a witch as well. You know, I'm into some magic. I mean, <laughs> we're all magical beings in some yes. way. And yes. I had someone that came to me, um, interestingly enough, and I wanted to bring it up in this topic because I know that you may have that as well. And they told me, they, they said, you know, um, I noticed that you're one of the mediums that talks about believing in God, right? And so um, you believe in, in God, you believe in the higher power, but, you know, I'm just afraid that if I do magic, that it's going to, you know, bring evil into my life. And so that's <laughs> typical, you know, even I get that even with my psychic readings, like some people are super Christian or super religious and they hear that, you know, that I am doing channeling of, you know, spirits and they're like, well, is it a good spirit, a bad spirit? Who are you channeling? And yeah. I'm like having to explain, you know, so what I told this person was that, you know, Yes, I'm a witch, but I'm a white witch, a good witch. Um, kind of like that Hallmark channel, The Good Witch. Uh, you know, I believe <laughs> in, in doing good good things to bring healing, to promote healing, to, um, to promote love, self-love, to bring love into your life, but never to bend the free will of someone. And I never work with dark uh, entities or saints or, or things like that, you know. I keep it more on the light side and um, working with God because I do believe in ultimately, even though I'm very spiritual um, and I believe, you know, that we're all universal, universally, universally connected, that there is a God source, uh, a higher power that unifies all of us and it mm -hmm. is love. Whether you want to call it God, you wanted to call it um, the Great Spirit, whatever you want to call it, I do believe that there is a unity or a focal point that we all um, get to. And I, and I uh, always pray, you know, to Archangel Michael and uh, Archangel Metatron before doing this kind of work. So I had to kind of um, ease this person this week through um, just chatting, you know, and, and eliminate some of the fears that they had behind or preconceived notions. And a lot of this is social programming that I've, and I've spoken about this in other, you know, um, podcasts as well. Um, like you have said, you know, it's just eliminating that fear of vibration. And I think that's what holds a lot of people back from authentically living out their destiny. What their, what is their, um, their sole purpose here on earth, uh, from the heart center, like you said, because in the heart center, there is no longer any fear. There's no longer any, um, 
rejection of, you know, of your higher self. Mm -hmm. You're fully immersed into that and you're fully embracing who you are. And it doesn't matter what other people think. You're not <laughs> going to change because of, an, of someone's opinion. And um, it's hard to get to that space. And it takes practice to yeah. eliminate those fears. Because God knows, like, when I first started, maybe about three years, it took me about three years, even while I was doing this work, that I even doubted myself at times. Or I was like, you know, <sighs> you know, this is going to be my path where I'm going to have to constantly have to defend myself, even though I don't have to. Mm -hmm. But I have to constantly, you know, uh, ward off, you know, trolls and things like that. And even though I'm at peace, you know, it, it's difficult process. So it's not easy. And I don't want to, you know, give that message across anyone that is listening to Jasmine and I today that are thinking perhaps, you know, that, you know, this path is very easy. It's it's really not. <laughs> it's it's one of the, I always say it like this, and I'm such a, I'm a truth, I'm, I'm a truth teller. I'm very blunt, you know, like I know how to love and coddle, but I, I'm also very straight to the point this has been the hardest journey i have right. ever had to endure <laughs> the hardest but you know what i'm i have this peace within me that no one can take away and i fought really hard to get there That's you know right. and and it's the most rewarding thing you can do for yourself i i, I always say it's not easy but you have people who have done it before who can alleviate you know i think like we've gone through it like really bad you know because it's yeah. like you're of that generation too i feel like the next generation like my son and and, and kids of that age they're less affected you know yeah. they're not it's not going to be as like wham like in your face boom here you are you're awakening and you have to battle all these demons it's a, it's going to be a lot lesser for the i the agree with you a hundred percent on that i actually feel your spot on completely because I feel like those of us that have children, I don't have any, but I know that you do. Um, and a lot of other people that are gifted right now, maybe in their 30s or 40s, you know, or even in their 50s and have children that are younger, you know, um, in their teens or, or you know, early, uh, um, like, you know, preview, uh, pre, I can't say that. I don't know what the, I'm trying to pronounce that word. I'm so bad. I get tongue twisted. Prepubescent or whatever. I can't say it right. Preview. Yeah, I can't. Preview. <laughs> pre How do you say that? Pre I well, think pre so. Something. Did I say that right, guys? I don't know. <laughs> We're just having fun. I'm making fun of my own self. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, um, what I was trying to say, like the age groups of like maybe um, five, you know, to like 13. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like a lot of, of um, these children that are super gifted, that maybe have spiritual abilities, um, that are open, they're going to have an easier time, I feel, because... Um, we are paving the way for them and we're kind of like helping them and guiding it. And I feel like it, like you being a mom that is super intuitive and open to spirit and, you know, open to just the universe. Um, it's going to help your child as well. Cause I know that, you know, they are spiritually gifted as well. Um, and so I feel like it's a new wave of, of, you know, uh, star children seeds. that are coming to earth. Yeah. Star seeds, um, crystal children, rainbow mm -hmm. children, Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful because I feel like these are going to be the game changers or they're going to be the people um, over the next 20 to 40 years. And I haven't talked about it, but I'm working on my uh, my new book that's going to be coming out Ooh, yeah. next year. Uh, and I talk about this in the book about, you know, the new wave of uh, new souls that are coming onto Earth and everything that is going on. Um, you know, they're going to be very powerful. I feel these are going to be like the CEOs. These are going to be the spiritual awakeners, you know, the people that um, bring spirituality and kind of, uh, it's no longer going to be so much the taboo, you know, the the thing that people kind of like the elephant in the room, people don't want to talk about, you know, or if you do, it's like you're judged. I feel like a lot as, as the older generations are dying off and these souls are passing on transitioning to spirit, it's almost like we're going through a new elevation, a new platform a new way of, of 5d you know programming and just um all that information coming down to earth and really just processing because i feel the earth over the next 10 to 15 years is actually going into a 6d um level we are rising up um right now we're in 3d 4d well we're in 5d but a lot of people are not at that level and you no. know that Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like we're going to the 60 very soon, um, within the next 10 to 15 years is what I get. And I'm ready for it. I'm yeah. so ready for it. I'm ready I'm for ready. it yesterday. I got yeah. these now. Like I want it now. 
<laughs> me too, girl. Like, I mean, this is just so much drama, like all the political things that are going on in the world mm -hmm. right now, the shootings, the, um, you know, Epstein, Epstein, I don't want to even talk about that right now, but you know what happened mm -hmm. and just the deception. Like, I feel like everything in media is propaganda. A lot of it is to kind of, you know, sway things up, you know, and make people think what the media is saying, but it, but it's also, it's, it's driven by fear. Like yeah. everything, I never see anything. I rarely see anything good unless I'm on like 11, 11 awakening. And I see a video of like something beautiful, you know, it's all, and listen, I'm a mom, right? I yes. want to <laughs> be in the now, like I do. And I was a victim of gun violence when I was 16 years old. Oh my so God. yeah, I had a gun pointed to my head. I'm um, so sorry. No, it, you know what? It's okay. Again, and those were all like trauma that I had to face because right. I never really, it was suppressed. I literally had that issue happen, that incident. And then the next day I was like, all right, well, I got to go to work. I got to, you know, and so all those things too, it's like a journey back. Like you have yeah. to go back and pick up those pieces and, and, you know, coddle your, your 16 year old self that experienced that. But, but like all this is like triggers, right? This is all coming up and it's, sadly necessary because we yeah. have been asleep and in this deep sleep for so long and look at what we're doing to our universe look at what we're doing with global warming with our environment with our children our children are all like prescribed up on on medicine it's like no it's like crazy. we're all robots and yeah. so i know it's a lot and i know it's really heavy yeah but you have to take it all with a grain of salt like you have to have an awareness of what's going on yeah you but have you to. also can't let it you know and i had like listen when a certain president <laughs> came on board i was like trigger 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 you know they were talking about <laughs> everything like immigration abortion like me 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 like what like i was getting triggered and i was feeling sick and i was negative and that's the thing it's like you have to be very careful not to feed it and i think by accident we're feeding it because we're just, oh, look at this happen and that happen. And again, it's okay to have an awareness, but it's so heavy. You have to like create a blockage and you have to know, okay, I'm going to do my part. And yeah. this is how I'm going to contribute to the world. And this is how I'm going to change it with my vibrations. But you have to stay high. I agree you with know. you a hundred percent because like, like I stay away from, um, stay off and away from CNN news. Um, I would everything. never put it on that channel. It's horrible. Just everything you see is negative, negative, negative. Yeah. And even on my Facebook um, scrolls, you know, I if I see something, I'm like, I'm just scrolling past it. I don't want to read it. I don't want to mm -hmm. absorb it. As an empath and intuitive, I pick up on that energy and that vibration. Like you said, I get sick. Even though I'm trying to stay positive, a lot of that brings us down as sensitives. Yeah. So I stay away from it. And, I, and like you said, it, it's just like... Well, when I think back to, because I was born in 1982, and I'm 37 years old. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, so we were children of the 80s, and we grew up in the 90s, right? All, all this, like, was a different culture. Like, we're living in a whole different kind of a ball game now in the mm -hmm. 2020s, you know, as we get to 2020, like, where we're at right now. None of that was prevalent. Like, we didn't feel like, growing up as a child, I never felt scared of the world, you know, or, like, you know, I didn't see the amount of violence and things and uh, global warming and all the things that are happening right now, you know, to our planet and how it's being polluted. And, you know, the sun, you know, it's getting hotter, like this heat waves that we're having in Texas right now, it's like 110, um, literally. Um, we didn't have that in the 90s. Like, I don't remember it being so hot where you couldn't, like, be comfortable in summer outside, you know. And um, now it's like, it's horrible. Like, everything has changed. And so... I really do feel like, you know, a lot of this is like the earth itself is like screaming at us. It's yeah. telling us, you know, wake up. We need to put more love. I need love. I need, I need help. I need y'all to all come like, together as a collective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. to, um, and just to love one another. Cause I feel like all these negative vibrations that are happening worldwide, um, there's a reason for it. There's always a reason for it. And I feel like it's to transform everyone in their way of thinking to bring us together, to bring us uh, more unified, you know, as a And also, I, I believe that it's even in our, especially in our generation and our parents' generation, it was, you know, like, turn the other cheek, like, close the door, like, you know, whatever they never happening spoke over of it. there. They never yeah, spoke like, of it. <laughs> right. And even, like, with family and, you know, I deal with a lot of 
trauma and sadly like child abuse and like well no well uncle did this but he's in our family so we got to protect you know always protecting the predators not the victims and so this was this is like the universe god buddha you know gaia just saying like you if you're gonna close your eyes to it i'm gonna shove it in your face so this way you can see that just like there's beauty, there is this evil, and we need to counteract that evil with good and love and light. Like, I really believe that's the message. It's not like, oh, my God, what's happening? The world's going to end. It's like, we need to wake up. And she's showing us the reality of what is brewing and what is happening behind yes. closed doors. We're not helping our neighbor neighbors. We're not, we're not giving that unconditional love to people. We're shaming them. We're saying, oh, well, you were raped. Are you sure? Was it, you know, it's like all this. Bologna, absolutely you know absolutely like the, that's the world that social media has become it's become toxic in some ways and some in some ways you know i know that my business couldn't survive without it you know i i depend on social media but um i feel like to a certain point you know there's good social media there's bad social media and a lot of it like you said has become an open forum for bullying for mm -hmm. um degradation to um to promote hate yeah. and violence and all of that is just the the negative aspects you know that's not aligned with true source or god source or with the higher power as i call it right. um and so like you said dealing with past life traumas um it's something that we all have to kind of go back to um in the and it's true what you said the universe does shove that in our face the more that we reject something or we we, we ignore it and we put it off and procrastinate we don't want to address it sooner or later it's going to come back through some kind of way in some kind of form to us so that we that way we can be um be made ready to deal with that issue um mm -hmm. and once we deal with that that a lot of that is karmic like you said karmic in nature and these are the recurring patterns like a lot of my clients i get a majority of females that um may you know having be have loving um having love issues are in the love department you know um they haven't found their true love yet um and, and can i say can i yeah. jump on that because I, I was that person for such a long time. And then I ended up picking, you know, exactly what I needed. But what I realized about that is we don't love ourselves completely. You yes. know, like we, like, here we are, like, you know, I, and I deal with divorce moms too, like, you know, going through the same situation and they're like, I, where's my, where's my guy? Like, you know, you just ended up with this one and now you're just so hungry to have somebody like fill you up. But yet, we're the one you need to do that for yourself like and you, you need, need time to sometimes you need order. time before you like you go through a divorce a divorce is not easy it's it's painful oh. it is it, it taxes it's your a body death. It's, it's a death, death. you have to yeah, mourn it, it is, in essence it is death of the soul and it's like a rebirth it's a new yeah. rebirth mm -hmm. and i know that you um are very you know uh good at, at helping people through this and like you said i really agree you know that it's just we need to love ourselves, but also realize that it's sometimes we need time. A lot of uh, people, men and women both that are divorcees, you know, they want to go immediately into another relationship to say, hey, I got someone and kind of be like, ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you got to change that mentality. If, if those of you that are listening, you know, are going through that now, because it's not going to help you yeah. to kind of be vindictive or, you know, um, hold some kind of animosity towards your ex. Yeah, but also you're not like you're not helping your you're not giving no. yourself time to even mourn heal. And, and figure to out heal. what was your yeah yeah you have no to way I've been, it. it's gonna be one year it's gonna be one year in like a two weeks and I have not dated I have not been in a relationship you know I tried it once and I was like oh no I still need to heal myself I'm not ready you and know there's like there's, no shame in that there's nothing wrong with that you know I yeah. I think it's beautiful because you're giving yourself time like um you don't have to rush you know yeah. and i'm the same way you know i haven't found that special someone and i'm not in a rush for it either and i've learned to love myself unconditionally i'm in a process right now where i'm going through deep transformations um i wanted that you know for a long time you know right now and um, right now what i'm doing is i'm just going through transformations mm -hmm. um you know body wise image wise um loving myself more because i feel like in certain ways the, the, the condition that i have now um, was because I didn't love myself a hundred percent, you know, and I, and I wasn't putting myself first, like you said. And so, yes, it's like, you know, there's so many things at 37 years old. I wish I would have known all of this, like when I was 20. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> but like, like I said before, like, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Like a lot, 
if you're a 20 year old out there, you don't know everything. Let me just say that. I you know. don't know. You think you do. You think but you, you know, don't. but you don't. If you're in your 20s <laughs> and you're listening to us, I'm not going to, you know, be yeah. throwing shade. Don't at hate because we were like I'm that not too, hating, right? But it's I'm like, just oh, saying I'm 20. It. You I'm, don't I'm know so everything. <laughs> you're going to learn as you go. As now that we're in our 30s, I'm 37, you're 37, 37 right? Are you I'm 30? I'm going to be 37 August 20th. Yeah. You're going to be 37. Yeah. So, like at 37 now, I'm barely going through that, that phase. You know, I'm going through understanding people better because I grew up so sheltered and like I never really understood or I never interacted with a lot of people until my spiritual work. And now I'm getting to understand people better, their dynamic, how they operate, how the world is, you know, there's good people. And then there's people that you have to kind of like, you know, you know, just move yourself away from. Um, and it's not because you are, you know, being evil or because you don't want to help them or you're jealous. It's because sometimes there are toxic narcissists and there are those kind of people that, you know, just don't elevate us and it can cause sickness. It can cause bodily illness. It can cause you to lose yourself in that world of poison. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened in my marriage. You know, that was, yeah. I was, and there was no escaping it. Like you can't heal in the same place that you were, you know, whatever issue you were going through. It's like, I knew I reached a, a, a cap. I'm like, I, there's no, there's no way of me evolving. I lost myself. I'm like, this isn't me. Like, how is everything happening? But, and we also as empaths and intuitives and just like wanting to love on people, we attract those people. Like, it's like freaking like honey and bees, you know, it's just, it's, and you have to be very mindful because I always want to help somebody. I always want to nurse them back in, in, in whatever, you know, whatever thing they need. But it's like, wait a minute, like, am I doing that? because I need that or, yeah. and you know, like, I'm like, no, 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 because that's not helping me out. And it's okay to say no. And yes. it's okay to have your boundaries because you can't help everybody. Cause then you also need to protect yourself. Right. You know, and I agree with that. And like somebody was saying, I think it was Cece, she said, um, even at 37, you don't know, no, oh, no. Um, even at a hundred, you don't know. That is so true. And I'm not going <laughs> to reject that, you know, or, you know, say that that's not true because no. that's the case. Um, let me see here. Yeah, somebody said from North Carolina, um, I, how can I deal with people's energy? I want to stay inside sometimes. So I'll let you answer that, Jasmine. Do you have yeah, well, you know what? Sometimes I stay inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'm like, you know what? It's not happening. I, I, and I do this with my son too. I always like to do like a visual of like a protective bubble. And you know that nobody can penetrate you. It's like it's like a mind over matter again. It's like okay, I I also use <laughs> I use the root sprays and stuff like that for protection because I believe yes. in all that. I believe in crystals. You Me know, too. it's oh yeah, right? Like bracelets and everything. So it, there's like a combination of stuff that you can do. But ultimately, you know, if you're really feeling heavy, grant yourself the permission to be like, I'm staying in. You know, when Mercury was in retrograde. Holy, that month for me and my laptop did not last. Let me tell you, like all the energy just like it, it died on me. And I was like, okay. You know, there were days where I'm like, I am not going out because it just yeah. seems so heavy. And there was, there was a lot of like aggressive energy. And again, you like attract that without even knowing. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going out today. I'm going to drop off my kid. And I mean, that's you know? they have like, you know, these, um, these, these uh, apps, like if you need something to cook, you know, you can have someone bring it to your doorstep. I mean, <laughs> I mean, um, at, at this age, you can just be like, I didn't even know there was like Instacart for a single mom. I'm yes. like, what? Somebody like brings your groceries. So you literally don't have to go out for anything. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. like um, a, a local store. It's called HEB. And basically you can go on the website and you can put in, you know, what you want to order and it'll, they'll bring it to you. Um, straight to your door, all your grocery shopping. You don't have to leave your house at all. But I'm the same way. I don't go out much, and I really don't like the energy right now in the world right now. Mm -hmm. um, on certain days, you know, I can feel that vibration. And if I go out, you know, it's like I can feel just the negativity. And so I want to, like, go into my own little shell. But, like, you, I didn't know that they had until recently some mm -hmm. of that sage spray or smudge spray. Oh, but yeah. they have it in all kinds of um, different herbs and yeah. And it comes in convenient because a lot of people don't like the smoke, you yeah. know, that of a sage stick. And so the smudge spray is just as good. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Pamela made mine and it, they're really, really convenient. And also like incense. I love burning incense from time to time. Uh, I have a dragon's blood uh, yes. incense right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who put me on that one. All the root stuff. I love, love. Yes. Stuff. 
Um, so I wanted to ask you, like, have um, what has been your most fulfilling life experience um, as a coach, as a life coach? Um, honestly, because of my work, I incorporate the two now. Um, I first started out as coaching because that's kind of, you know, again, coaching. That's like the, the paper thing. But then, like, my journey took me into Reiki and, and understanding more of the spiritual aspect to it. Um, so I have to say, like, when I started to combine the two, because it, you know, when I do a Reiki session on somebody, it's mm -hmm. like, you get to the nitty gritty, you know, there's no lying in coaching, like, you know, with therapy, you could you talk as much as you want to talk, like, uh -huh. there's, you can show somebody, and it takes a while for that person, a therapist or a coach to really then get to know you and understand like, oh, okay, well, you said this at the beginning, but I really feel like it's, we're headed towards this way. And you know, I also where I feel like, like with when it comes to like Reiki, I think a lot of people have in their mindset that it's going to be done in just one issue in your, I mean, your first session, that it's going to be all healed in one session. And ideally, that's not how Reiki works. Sometimes it may need three or four or five sessions to get that healing yeah. um, done because there's just so much that you have to kind of dig through and yeah. the, uncover and, those and, layers. And things coming up. Yeah. yeah. And I like to always say, like, in the Reiki world, it's like a cycle. So anywhere, depending on how heavy the situation is, anywhere between four to six sessions will complete the cycle. I agree. You know, and then yeah. with Reiki, because it's good with anxiety, it's good for moms, you know, pregnant moms. Like, you can just do the maintenance and just kind of, like, just to keep that, like, level of love and energy inside your body. But I, I have to say, for me, the most rewarding was this one client that I had and when she walked in, um, you know, head down, she couldn't make eye contact, Aww. was very like, you know, wearing clothes that just didn't like very loose clothes. Uh -huh. um, and you could tell like she had trauma in her past. And um, we worked for almost a year. Mm -hmm. And I remember like the last session, and I'm not gonna cry, but I I'm a mom. So I am a crier. I might. Um, it was just a beautiful scene to see her walk through the door. She had this like orange dress on, you uh -huh. know, when she talked to me, it was, she was looking at me, you know, she wasn't scared to look me in the eye. She was very confident. Aww. She also told me that she stood up to like a certain family member and said, this is what happened to me. And, you know, whether I lose my family or not, I need to defend myself and I need to speak out because this wasn't okay. So and she just, came from like no confidence to like confidence. Oh my God. Just loving herself and just being like, yeah. well, this happened to me, but this is not my story. Like this is not who I am. This doesn't define me. This is a lesson. This is something that happened, but I'm, I'm, I'm voicing all that stuff, you know? Yeah. And just to see someone like, we don't make eye contact that much. And you can tell for me, at least I can tell those, you know, um, souls who, it's because of the heaviness. It's because of the weight of what happened to you. It's because you were told, well, no, I don't believe you or you did something, you know, you were shamed and everything. But then to see her like just blossom into her own skin and be comfortable and being like, yeah, this happened to me, but I'm okay with it. Meaning that I'm moving on. It's not defining me. It's not giving me that scarlet letter where like the world says I'm a, I, I should be ashamed or I'm, I'm broken. No, F that. No, things happen. Absolutely. Yeah. But there are ways of, of, of it not defining you, you know, where I feel like society wants to put us label mental Ill illness. You're this. Oh, that happened to you. Like, oh, God, go away. Like, no way. Like, we all have our obstacles our challenges our our trauma, sadly, in certain cases. And you just it's what you make of it. You know, like my thing is life is beautiful even when it's not because it really is like see it as a gift so this way you can transform something into yeah. like something beautiful you know i agree a hundred percent and that's a beautiful um story thank you for sharing that um with me and i you know i love uh people that do reiki i think one of the questions that we had here mm -hmm. um was uh do you do um face-to-face -face sessions and uh, like uh, in-person sessions and do you do long distance uh reiki Yes, I do both. Like remote, um, uh, yeah, remote healing. I'm a believer. Absolutely. Like I want to reach whoever is called and I speak their lingo and we connect and we vibe Whether you know, I have clients in the UK. I have my New York crew, you know, cause that's where I Same came from. Same thing with me. Like that's what I tell people. Like I think some people just are, don't, 
they're more used to like being on the phone with a psychic, you know, or yeah. if they are, you know, um, on Skype. And the way that I do it is I do it through email, but I also do it through chat. You know, I have my chat readings, which are done like on Facebook Messenger, but it, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in Timbuktu, like you said, yeah. or Shanghai. And as long as there is a, a technology, there is some kind of connection. You know, all I need is a photo, like you said, and, and it's like, we can connect. Um, one of the things that uh, you just triggered something in me that um, was positive, I wanted to talk about. Um, a lot of today's youth, um, yesterday I had an experience, I went to the theater, right? And so I was standing in line and I was there and there was someone, um, a young boy, you know, there was a group of young kids because they're still out for the summer here in Texas. I think they go back to school this week. Uh, and I was in line and there was no, they didn't come with their parents and they were standing in line and they were making fun of someone that was handicapped. Um, like you said, they just were, you know, laughing and laughing, and laughing. And I just, you know, I was like, I was just like paralyzed, like to think, you know, there are kids that, you know, today it reminded me of when I was bullied, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for being different, that there are people still, there are children here that their parents don't teach them or they don't really um it's maybe not the parents fault but they have adopted this way when they're around their peers um to fit in or you know and so i want to say this if you are someone that's young maybe listening or you maybe are someone um that has children you know have that conversation with them about accepting everyone regardless regardless of their disabilities how they look if they're missing a limb we are we are all one another you know we are all um, here together as, um, as you know, souls here on earth. And so we shouldn't be making fun of other people. It's just, it's wrong. And I was like, to me, you know, when I was young and I go back, I never laughed at people that were different than me. I never made fun of them. And it's like, I don't get it. I don't see why there's a lot of people that want to, you know, do that. It's just like, it's crazy. And it's also something that, that I feel, and again, I'm not, because I'm a parent, so I don't want to be like, oh, it's all the parents' fault. But at the end of the day, there is an energy behind that. And our kids, and I've seen this from my kid, like they do as we do. You know, it's not about what we say, oh, don't do this. Yes. No, it's like they replicate and they mimic what we're doing. So it's almost, I feel like my son uh, is, is my guy. He's like my teacher, you know, like there are things sometimes I'm like, Oh, I know he got that from me. I'm like, Oh crap. I'm like, all right, time to do some work more mom. You know, yes. I don't like this. And so you can see what you need to, to fix in yours, not fix, but you know what you need to work on in yourself through your child and or kids that are disrespectful to their parents and talk back to them. I'm like, uh, if that was my mom back when the day, oh my I God, <laughs> my dad had the chancla, like it was the Correa, like it was like whatever was near his hand, like you better not, you know, yeah. like that was the old generation too, a bit too aggressive and a bit too handsy. But yeah, like these kids now are like, you They're sneeze, just wild. Some like, of them oh. are just wild. And, yeah. you know, they have so much freedom and liberty that, that we didn't have growing up, like, we didn't have cell phones at 13 and 14 or 15. We didn't have the internet at that time. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like 17, 16, 17 before internet came. It was that dial up kind, you know, the, the dinosaur internet where you have to dial and you hear that ding, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't like have all well, that. Move it this I way know. Now. Things are just so crazy. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you recommend people doing Reiki on themselves at all? What is your perspective on that? Huh. Um, I say if you go to a practitioner and you learn it, then I highly recommend it. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm maybe I'm old school, like these like weekend, I don't know, like things I learned Reiki and it took years, you know, and I still don't feel like I know it all. Like I want to absorb everything. So I say, yes, you can. Cause I do Reiki on myself, like not even knowing like intuitively i'm like oh why am i holding you know right here yes. and like oh i feel the energy or in my solar plexus or whatever so but i want people to be educated and and know yeah. what they're doing and and get the attunement and get and get the symbols done properly because yeah because my, i agree with you because there's some there's dangers you know um to doing reiki uh, on yourself if you're not trained um you don't always go off of youtube videos i will say that even though youtube is so good you know yeah. on like hacks and stuff like right, that right. things like that you when it comes to spiritual work you're talking about dealing with energy the other side the yeah you know uh 
power, it's energy, it's magic, it's all that good stuff. But at the same time, it can cause a lot of havoc and chaos. Would you agree, Jasmine? Yes, I would. <laughs> in the most in the most loving way, but yeah. And so you just have to be prepared and you also have to have a respect for it too. You know, like I always, you know, it's energy. And so you need to have respect for the ceremony. You need to have respect for what that means. And also an understanding that things come and go, you know, like you yeah. never know what might happen. So I just recommend being educated and, and getting that attunement. Cause I have to tell you, like my ceremony was beautiful. Like I connected or reconnected with so many ancestors. Like when I had my ceremony, like I felt like the backing of my family who I've never even met. It was such a beautiful moment. And it was such a touching moment that that's why I deal with a lot of ancestral patterns too, of breaking that. Um, but it's such a beautiful thing. And even if you don't practice it on others, it's such a beautiful way of living and yes. understanding energy and even just yourself. Yeah, I agree. And Roger Duran 13 asked us, um, he's asking, do, do you guys meditate? For me, yes, 100%. I have to because if I don't, I won't get anything done. Like my mind starts like wandering off in a certain direction. I will get um, anxiety really mm -hmm. bad because mm -hmm. I suffer from anxiety attacks. Um, I'll get tense and I'm just feel yucky. I don't, I feel blah, yeah. you know? Yeah. So for me, yes, full yeah. heartedly. Same. What about you? I, yeah, no, same. And I was again, that, that typical New Yorker in my twenties, like I can't meditate. I can't sit down. Like my mind's going a thousand miles per hour. And it's just, it's also the way you view meditation. Cause I feel like you can do so many different ways. Like I love connecting with nature. Nature is my tool yes. and I love going there and there's the walking meditation you can do. You know, there's so many ways for you to silence the mind. You don't always need to sit. Right. You know? For me, um, what I found very helpful um, is to like, listen to the, uh, on a YouTube, I'll put like a, a channel that is playing live, you know, 24 hours a day, like nature music or the mm -hmm. sound of the ocean. Uh, pre-recorded like for eight hours and I will put that on with a uh, noise canceling headsets on me yeah. and then I will just be you know sitting down close my eyes or laying down sometimes I do this when I'm right about to go to bed go to sleep and I'll just um just be with my eyes closed just meditating and it's so relaxing usually I fall asleep and then I wake up with my headsets <laughs> shifted and everything and I'm like oh my god I just went to sleep but that's how I meditate and sometimes in the shower you know I'll do the shower meditation method mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends you know it like you said it, you could do it any kind of way it could even be like coloring using an uh, adult coloring book or painting something yes um, or music that, somebody somebody wrote music like just dancing just to kind of yeah. like yes. I love dancing oh my god yeah, yeah. such a and it's a good stress reliever too and again it's a good grounding you know, that's how our ancestors, you know, reconnected with Mother Earth, reconnected with themselves. So dance party. You know, I love that fact of dancing. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a good dancer, but sometimes I, if I listen to something, I'm in my own home, yeah. you know, I will get down. I will, <laughs> you know, be shaking my booty because, <laughs> you know, there is something about uh, music and so healing. And it's mm -hmm. like, if you listen to a song that you really like, like it's good, you know, um, it's good for the soul. And I think there's, that's where we come back to that that focal point we were talking on and that we hit on earlier in the show that, you know, there's just so many people that are um, restricted. They restrict themselves because they feel like, oh, I'm going to be uh, viewed, you know, by my kids or be, me, be, me, uh, be made uh, fun of, of mm -hmm. by my spouse or whatever, yeah. whatever. But you just need to be yourself and just be free. That's part of being a free spirit. I'm a free spirit, you know. Um, I got a tattoo recently. Like I said, I'm doing things that I would have never thought that I would be doing. Um, and, and it's, it's liberating to speak your truth. I was also one of those people, like I'm still very prim and proper when I do readings, celebrity readings on my YouTube channel, but, um, you know, away from that, like if I'm face to face with someone, um, or I'm talking with my friends, I'm definitely unrestrained and I, I say what I want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, even though, but I try to make it always come out in a very positive way or in a way that it, you know, it's not judging or you're hurting someone, but I'm at that yeah, age. I feel it's, like it's, it's like love. It's like lovingly truthful honesty. Yeah, I know. I, I don't yeah. know if I, if I conquered the, the not so blunt, I'm working on it, but it's the truth. And it's not, it's not, I always say, I'm like, this is no, I hold no judgment for anybody. I don't, Whatever you need to do, whatever yeah. works for you, we're all different. Like, there's no way my stuff is going to work on you. Like, 
I customize my, my, I customize my packages, you know, because it's like, everybody's different. And I love it. It's like, well, what's, what's your, what's your way? And I'm like, well, it depends on what you need, you know, like everybody's different. So I want to ask you, Jasmine, like, I know that you, you are a life coach. You do um, coaching sessions. You do readings as well, right? Intuitive readings. Mm -hmm. um, do you, you set packages. Do you sell like certain herbs or like uh, sprays, et cetera? No, it's just more of like the, the uh, coaching packages. Coaching like, packages. Do you want energy healing? You know, do we work on mindfulness, meditation? Like I customize it depending on, on where the person's at and what they need. And where can they um, reach out to you um, if, like, after today, if they are there listening? So I'm going to post this on YouTube. I'm going to post it here on um, this channel, you know, on my channel um, and under IGTV. So um, after today, if they want to get a session with you um, or, you know, get your services, how can they contact you? What would you like them to do? Yeah, two ways. You can go on my IG, uh, Coaching by Jasmine, and email me there. Or you can just go on my website, which is www.coachingbyjasmine.com. Okay, cool. Yeah. And also, like on her on her profile on our profiles, if you go down, you'll see also like um, a website link on there. Is that your website as well? That link tree? Oh, the link tree. Yeah, it has my website articles okay. I've posted. Yeah, so much fun stuff on there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so definitely be um, for those of you. I recommend Jasmine. You know, wholeheartedly. You know, get a session with her. Get you know, work through those traumas if you're going through something yeah. very difficult. It's very much worth it. Um, and so that we, we have about 10 minutes still more or less. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, do you do like any events? Do you have any events that you go to or like fairs, you know, there's fairs or like networking with other, um, coaches, uh, other intuitives. Is there anything that you're planning on doing this year? Um, you know, I'm, cause I moved to LA in December, so I was getting <laughs> acclimated, you know, single mom trying to balance it all. Um, but now I'm getting into it. Like I really, there's this community called Hey Mama that I'm working with and I've done a lot of uh, Reiki meditations with them, but that's a closed community. But if you want, if you're a mom in a business setting, you know, that's an awesome community and an awesome outlet. I am the LA person and I'm all about loving and Reiki and meditation. I you also, said it's called Hey Mama? It's called Hey Mama. Yeah. And how can they find that? Uh, if you go on the Hey Mama um, Instagram or www.heymama.com, oh, okay. uh, yeah, they'll find out information on that. So I'm doing a lot of events with them. I'm also going to be in Hermosa Beach next month at Earth's Elements. I'm still confirming what day it will be, but I'm going to do uh, this meditation called, um, what is it called? Now, of course, I forgot. Anchor into, an anchor into Self with Love. That's on Long Beach, right? Uh, Hermosa Beach. Hermosa. Okay. I, I remember hearing that before, but I don't know. There was another one that's on, on Long Beach, but I'm not sure. I've heard of that. It sounded the same. I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, what, the there's place. an Earth Elements in Encinitas. Yeah, I think it's that one. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I've heard of that yeah. Earth Elements before. Um, it's a great store. It's, you know, they have crystals and all that stuff. And so I'll be doing a, a meditation that I did in San Diego when I lived there. And it was just awesome. Again, anchoring into self with love because I am all about heart activation, working through yourself and loving yourself first, because then that's when you see the reflection of who's coming back to you. Um, do you work with any other forms of divination? Like, do you work or like any other tools uh, in your work? Do you use color therapy at all or like any other kind of tools? Yeah, I like to use um, cards. I'm so into card pulling. You know, I do it every day. I like to do a collective card pull because um, I feel like that also helps with intuition and trusting yourself that whatever you pull is what you need. You yes. know, um, I have a pendulum. Of course, it's like rose quartz. And so I use that. At I love it. Yeah, it's all. And I didn't even know. I was just like, you know, getting uh, like pulled to like rose quartz and love and like because I just I have a huge heart. And it was it was closed off because of my my path and because of what I encountered. And, you know, I was a very angry person in my, in my youth because of, of just every, like the trauma that we had, but, uh -huh. you know, and then you get that thick skin, but like, that's not who I am. Like I am a lover. I want people to love themselves. I want, you know, people to like look in the mirror and really, instead of like picking apart, like, Oh, I need this. I need that being like, wow, there was one day I have to tell you. And that I just sat down and I had lunch with myself. I was in front of a mirror and I was like, just talking to myself. They're like, Wow, like, look at your structure. But it, it, I know. I was like, can we do that an hour? An hour? 
<laughs> so I want to thank you so much, guys. Be sure, again, after today, if you want to go ahead and get a session with Jasmine, um, you can go and you can send her a DM. Uh, you can go to her website. It's coachingbyjasmine.com. Correct. Is that right? That's right. And then you can also go to her website, I mean, her um, her Instagram, which is at uh, coaching, coaching by, by Jasmine. Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, on her link, like in the profile of, you know, below her pic, you'll see that she has a link to her website. You can click on that or you can email her. But um, check her out. She is terrific. Jasmine, I love you so much. Thank I you so you. much for being here. Yeah. And all of you guys, thank you all for being yes. here. Yes, thank you so much for, for coming on. Thank you so much for listening. This is, I always say this is the beginning of a beautiful journey of self-love. Yes. And if you need me, I'm here. I am somebody who walked through it. I walked through the fire. I have scars and I, am, I proudly wear them as like a badge of honor and to show that I've been through hell and back and you too can yes, smile and be I happy. Love I love, love, love you and love yes. all of you out there. Thank you so much, Jasmine and everyone have an amazing rest of your Sunday and yes. a great week. Awesome. Sending love. Bye. Bye.